And you were just saying that you follow the situation in Sri Lanka very closely. Yeah, there's a lot of people who've... Uh, refugees from Sri Lanka, particularly Tamil community, uh, and I represent a lot of Tamil, uh, British Tamils, uh, and they have always been pretty angry by the government there, the Rajapaksa family, who've got the president and the prime minister, have, yeah. and uh, frankly have run the whole economy in a very corrupt way. Uh, and have mismanaged the economy, and now it's affecting the lives of, of everybody in Sri Lanka. Uh, so um, I hope our government will be sending the strongest signals to tell the Rajapaksa government it's time for them to go. What um, intel did you get from the Queen's speech yesterday when it comes to our government's view on our own cost of living crisis? Not a lot. I mean, I was hugely disappointed. I was expecting uh, that after the people had said during the local election results they were not happy, the government would take some action. Um, but there was nothing for the cost of living. And there are millions of families... What do you want them to do? How, what, um, there's no money. There is. We need a VAT tax cut. That's what Liberal Democrats have argued for, worth £600. And you can pay for that by asking the oil and gas companies to, to pay a windfall tax. They're making huge profits. And that's the flip side of this higher... Uh, heating bills and the higher prices at the, the petrol pumps. A government minister on the programme earlier in the week said they're paying enough tax for now. Well, um, I, I disagree with him. Um, I want a fair tax. I want a fairer society. I want to help people. Uh, and when a company, these oil and gas companies, are making profits they never expected to make, these are huge super profits, it's only fair to ask them to pay the money to help people who are having to pay those bills. It was really interesting. One of the uh, chief executives of these companies said the other day that um, their investment plans would not be affected at all by a windfall tax, which is the government's previous argument they were using against it. And so the government have got nowhere to hide now. They should uh, ask these oil and gas companies to pay more money, and then we have that money for the tax cut that millions of families and pensioners need. How worried are you about the Northern Ireland Protocol being ripped up? We had um, Mr Gove on the programme just a few moments ago and he, was he said it was never set in stone, it was something that was always fluid and, and was meant to be negotiated along the way. Well, I have to say I disagree with uh, Mr Gove. It was an international treaty. International treaties aren't set in, uh, aren't fluid and flexible. They're, they're clearly treaties. Well, what worries me about this is the government seemed to be prepared to contemplate a trade war with our European uh, neighbours. A trade war at uh, a time of a cost of living emergency would be an absolute disaster. People need to be aware that if the government go down that route, um, the inflation we've seen so far will get even worse. Uh, the supplies of things in the shops would get even worse. And, you know, the government needs to be helping people. People are really struggling. And for Michael Gove and Boris Johnson and the rest of them to think that a, a trade war is the right way to deal with the cost of living crisis and economic crisis, I, I don't know what planet they're living on. Well, interestingly, I did put that to him and he said that that would just not happen, that it, it, it's, there's not going to be a trade war. Well, I, I, I sincerely hope there isn't, but if they're thinking of... Um, ditching the, the protocol, which was the international treaty, let's remember, that Boris Johnson signed, it was his idea, uh, if they now turn their back on that, um, the danger is there would be a trade war. I mean, let's be realistic about this. And, and I really worry about that. I worry about that for the people of Northern Ireland, for the business in Northern Ireland, and I worry about it for the for people across the United Kingdom. People are already uh, hurting enough. Uh, they're really suffering. They're worried about the increase in uh, heating and energy bills that's going to come this autumn. They're worried about the higher taxes they're paying. For the Conservatives now to say, well, it's OK, well, there'll be a trade war, I'm sorry, that's just not acceptable. Mm. You talk about energy uh, costs. Uh, I also put it to Mr Gove that before Brexit, he did say that VAT would be cut on energy uh, bills. Um, that hasn't happened. He's now said that that is because it would be a 5% cut for everybody and dukes and princes don't need that cut. Well, um, uh, the problem with Mr Gove and the Conservatives is they keep breaking their promises. Uh, this is not the only promise they've broken. They promise not to raise taxes and they've, risen, they've put up taxes. They promise not pensioners that they would keep the triple lock on pensions. They've broken that promise. This is a government that breaks promises left, right and centre, and it's hurting people out there. But do you think a cut on um, the a VAT on energy bills is the right way forward? I think a broader cut uh, in VAT is the right way forward. 
Um, I wouldn't just limit to energy bills. Uh, food prices are going up. Uh, petrol prices are going up. The way to really help people in a very big and bold way is what Liberal Democrats are arguing for, which is a 2.5% cut in VAT, down to 17.5%. Uh, that would give the average family £600 uh, a year. So I think that's the sort of bold measure that's needed. You can it's only not going to be enough, it. though, is it, for energy bills, 600 um, quid? Well, it would go some way. I mean, we have a, a, another set of policies linked to that which would help the most vulnerable because £600 would be for everybody, uh, for the average family, um, but there are pensioners, uh, disabled people, people on very low incomes who will need some extra help. So we've argued that what's called a warm home discount which takes money directly off people's uh, energy bills, that that should be doubled and the number of people who could get that would be, should be increased. So that's real help to people who are struggling. Where are you on Sir Keir Starmer and um, Bia Gage? Well, um, at the weekend, uh, I was suggesting that uh, he would have to consider a position if he got a fixed penalty notice. He would? He would have to. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, early this week, he actually said that's what he position he would take, that if he got a, a fixed penalty notice from the Durham police, he would resign. Um, and uh, I was actually quite pleased to see him say that, because I think that shows integrity and a willingness to, to accept the consequences. Yeah, but in, and in I just wish that the Prime Minister showed some integrity. Yeah, but in March, he did say, I think it was in March, um, the leader of the opposition said, because the Prime Minister was being investigated by the police, he should resign. And now he's being investigated by the police, but he's not resigning. Well, uh, listen, he's got to make his own decisions. No, but I wouldn't uh, what right, you right, right. Well, he's, I, I've said that I think it's at least good that he's, pre he's prepared to resign if he gets a fixed penalty notice. Uh, I just note the Prime Minister's had a fixed penalty notice. He's not resigned. I also note there's a possibility that the Prime Minister might get even more fixed penalty notices. So, you know, the Prime Minister is in charge of our country. He's no, supposed to be helping people uh, who are struggling. He's not doing that. And my worry is he's he's not giving leadership. He's now become a very weak leader because he's yeah. dogged by this, these crises and yeah, scandals. Yeah, we're almost out of time, but my question is, um, should the leader of the opposition, who is now uh, part of a criminal investigation, resign, given that that's what he said the Prime Minister should do? Well, um, uh, I, I haven't said that. Uh, I've been really clear on my position uh, throughout this. I he, just he, 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 he's got to decide his, his own uh, position. I actually called on the Prime Minister to resign not when there was a police investigation. I called for him to resign before that, and I explained why. Uh, he had said he, 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 he'd lied to Parliament about parties, and it turned out with Allegra Stratton's uh, comments that there were parties. So my uh, problem with the Prime Minister is not just that he broke the law, but he's dishonest. OK, it's good to see you, Sir Ed. Thank you for Thank joining you. us on the programme this morning. Thank you.